Romans chapter 12, you can stand when you find verse 1. You've heard this before. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may take your seats again. Title of my series is called The Enemy Inside Your Mind. Repeat after me. The enemy inside my mind. Amen. I want to start off by asking a question, and the question that I want to ask you this morning is, have you ever been in a relationship with someone enemy inside my mind. Have you ever asked the question, why am I like I am? Why do I do what I do? Why do I go where I go? Why do I say the things that I say? Why do I date the kind of people that I date? You ever ask yourself that question? Why is it that a man can have a wife and he loves her? He thinks she's beautiful. He thinks she's attractive. He wouldn't want to be with nobody else. But every time he sees another woman, his eye. There's an enemy. It's not in your pants, brother. It's in your mind. Ladies, have you ever asked yourself the question, why do I end up with the same type of dude? You see all the signs. You done seen him so much until you know what he going to say. You know the type of dude. And everybody around you saying, girl, leave him alone. He ain't no good. And you say, oh, they just jealous. But you go on anyhow with your little trifling behind and time the relationship ends, you got all this emotional baggage. You say all men are dogs. Don't nobody want to date you because they say you crazy. <laughs> There's an enemy. There's something that makes you do what you do that you don't understand. And guess what? It ain't Satan. Everybody wants to use Satan as the almighty, uh, demonic, angelic black sheep. The devil made me do it. No, he didn't. Satan can't make you do anything. 
I've heard this text preached a thousand and one times. Great sermons, great men of God, women of God who taught and preached this. Paul says, be not conformed of this world. Or don't, don't be a byproduct of the sin of this world, but, but be trans, transformed. If you're going to live in it, don't be of it. But when people preach on that, it's kind of like after you tell me don't be of the world, okay, well, how do I do that? And I've never gotten instructions, but God has led me, and my hopes and desires is before you leave today that you have an understanding of why you do some of the things that you do. Because if you understand why you do some of the things that you do, why you struggle with some of the things that you struggle with, then my hope is that you are able to make the necessary adjustments so you can be all that God has called you to be. So ushers, ushers, please ushers, I'm ready this morning. Get in the aisles. Let's pass out the syllabus for this morning, please. Amen, amen. We got the syllabus. Now, if you know everything, don't write down nothing. But if you, could, if you need some help with this, you really want to understand it, take it, I want you to write it down. That's right. Y'all ready? You don't have one, raise your hand, raise your hand. You don't have one. Got one back here. We got pens, we came prepared. We need some help up in the balcony on the left side up here. have one raise your hand all right ushers thank you now there's a man give my first slide please and this gentleman that you see behind me is a man by the name of Sigmund Freud many of you've heard that studied that in school Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist who developed the psychoanalytic school of psychology to where basically what he did is he broke down the very question that I asked and that is what makes people do what they do his whole school was to analyze the psychosis the psychology of a person that causes us to do these things and he broke down a model and according to Sigmund Freud there are three elements of our being, of our, of, our, of our makeup that is conscious and unconscious that makes us who we are. And you see those three things on your sheet, the first one being what? Id. Now, if you look at this behind me, it says the id comprises the unorganized part of the personality structure that contains the basic what? Drives, all right? What are the drives? When it says the basic drives, the instinctive, visceral things that you desire to do, that no one had to teach you to want to do it. Y'all, does that make sense? You got to make your children get up and go to school. So if you don't go, boy, I'm going to tear you up. They don't, want, they don't have a natural desire to do that. But nobody has to tell your child it's time to be hungry. Basic drive. You got to get up and go to work. Lord, I don't feel like being bothered with them Negroes today. I'm just going to get up and you don't want to do it. But nobody had to tell you that that woman in that red, red dress or that man with them muscles and that good hair made, made you feel a certain way. basic drive all of us want to have more than enough money we want to be comfortable 
That's instinct. That's it. That's what he's saying. Basic drives. Want to be comfortable. Now, Freud said that a baby, a newborn baby, anybody here got a baby, you ever had a child, and you remember, what did that child do all the time? Cry. When did a child cry? When it was hungry, when it was sleepy, when it was wet. It wanted to be comfortable. So Freud was saying that a child is it driven. All the child wants is to get what he wants, when he wants, how he wants it, and if he doesn't get it, he's going to cry. Basic drive. That's the it. That's the part of you that drives you, brothers. That makes you want to uh, uh, look at another woman. That makes you want to look at another man. That makes you want to make that money illegally. That, that, that it, that's the part of us that causes us to want to be comfortable. The pleasure principle that wants us to be happy. The it. The second one is the what? You've heard that one. But it may be a little bit different than what you think. The ego is the part of us that wants to please our what? In the essence, the ego is the manifestation of the id in the realm of reality. Brothers, when you see a woman and you begin to lust, your drive says, I want to have sex with her. The ego is what causes the id to get what it wants. So when you see her, you got a desire, that's the id. But to act on the desire is the ego. So in essence, whenever you meet an egotistical person, an egotistical person is a person who is willing to do whatever it takes to satisfy himself. He's selfish. He don't care about you. He's caught up in him. Ego. Then the third one is what? Super ego. The super ego aims for perfection. The super ego is the part of us that gives what? Balance. It is the mechanism that prevents us from always acting upon what? So you got, you ever watch cartoons? And then when Jerry was about to do something, he had a little angel on his right shoulder. He had a little devil on his left shoulder. And the devil was like, go ahead and hit Tom. You know you want to hit him. Go ahead and eat him. But then the other angel said, don't, don't do it. Leave him alone. Now, when we watch cartoons, it's a good angel and it's a bad one. One of them is telling us to do what's wrong. And the other one is telling us to do what's right. This is what fraud is saying. The super ego is your good angel. You want to do something wrong, and it whispers, don't do it. The super ego keeps balance in order that all of your actions are not acting upon doing what makes you happy. If you're with me, say amen. amen. All right, y'all just follow me. Now let me show you what a normal person, according to Sigmund Freud, looks like. This is what a person, a normal person on paper, made up of three equal parts. The first one is what? Id. The second one is what? Ego. The third one is what? Super ego. The id is internal drives. The desire to eat. The desire to have sex. The desire to be happy. The desire to live in a mansion. The desire to have more than enough money in your pocket. The drive. That's what that is. The ego causes me to act on what I want, but the super ego keeps me in check. This is the person that goes to the bar and he sits down and wants a drink. He wants a drink because he knows that when he consumes alcohol, it makes him feel good. That's the id driving him, saying you want to feel good. That alcohol is going to make you feel good. So him acting on what he feels is his ego. He says, give me a drink. 
Give me some of that Nouveau. I want some of that. He gets him some of that Nouveau. He gets him some of that Cavassier. Whatever your drink is, he gets him something. He has one drink. He begins to feel a little loose. He begins to feel good. He says, oh, yeah, I'm feeling good now. Oh, shuck it, shuck it, duck it. I'm feeling good. And, 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 and then that desire increases because when you become intoxicated, your whole concept of logic and reality goes out the window. So then it begins to talk to him. I wish I had a witness. Then that first says go ahead and get another one that ego is talking to him but then when he has two drinks hold up stop if you have another drink you're gonna be drunk if you get drunk you're gonna drive if you drive while drunk the police officer is gonna pull you over if they pull you over in Cobb County you go going to jail if you go to jail you're gonna lose your job if you lose your job you can't get another another job because they know it's so many unemployed people if I'm unemployed I can't pay my mortgage I can't pay my insurance and if I can't pay nothing my wife is gonna leave me So at that point when the super ego interferes, he says, it's time to go home. This is the person All right, that's a normal person. Yeah. Then let me show you how you look. <laughs> now notice, the normal person over and against the excessive person has one similarity. That's the E. Look, it takes up one third of the complete person, but likewise, so does it in the normal person. So the difference between the normal guy and the guy who cheats isn't the desire. Sisters, when he gets married to you, his desires won't change. But I'm cute. I'm pretty. I'm fine. I know. But his desire, I wish y'all would talk to me. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Now this person is different because the id is there. The desire is still there. But the problem with this person over and against the one that we just talked about is that whereas the super ego balances the this joker ain't got no balance. 
So this individual, being that he got a big ego, he's always doing what the id tells him to do. But you got a wife, I don't care. <laughs> That's that ego. Now this is what the drug dealer looks like. The drug dealer wants money. That's all he wants. Why do you work? You got to have money, right? Why do you get up every day to go and work hard? You provide for your family. You need money. All of us need money. We all got that. But the difference is this one doesn't care about what he's got to do to get it. He says, I'm going to get some cocaine, mix it up, get a rock, and sell it. Now, when I sell it, somebody's going to get high and get hooked on it. Why do drug addicts get hooked on drugs and alcohol? Because chemists understand that we are made up of, in, of an internal drive to want to be happy. We want to feel good. We want to distance ourselves from reality. What causes you to smoke when you're stressed? Because you're trying to do something that takes the pain away. So what happens when you get hooked on drugs or alcohol, you're not hooked to the drug. That's what you think. But you are hooked to how it makes you feel. So this fool says, oh, I want money. Yeah, driving it, getting money. Want Gucci, want Louis, want a purse for my girl, want to drive around in the big bins, don't want to pay taxes. Drive, drive, drive. He says, I don't care. I sell the dope, even though it's killing my people, I sell it. Even though it's killing children, I sell it. His ego is so big until all he wants to do is satisfy his own self. And every time his super ego saying, you think that's a good idea? I don't care. Speak to criminals. Folk who in the street, they got a skewed perspective of reality. All they care about is money. Talk to a girl who solicits her body. If it's by being a prostitute or an exotic dancer, all of them have a skewed reality of love and money. Because they are willing to forsake what's right to get what I got to have. Then let me show you how we should look. Bam. Now notice, on all three charts, the drive is all there. That's you right there, ego, all that's you. Normal person. But the difference between you and what you should be is your super ego. This is the person who has graduated from always allowing their desires to control them. <laughs> oh, I'm preaching this morning. I know I am. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like my old man. You ain't got to say nothing. I know I'm preaching. <laughs> See, that's your problem. Your problem is you can't control your desires. You want to do it, so you do it. If it looks good, I'm all in. But a mature Christian is a person who can suppress from acting on what makes him happy. This is the person that ain't perfect because you got the 
try. I want to do everything y'all do. Everything y'all do, I've either, either done it or wanted to do it. I'm just going to keep it right there. I ain't lying. Amen, Joe. I give myself an amen with that one. I'm a man of God. I know. I'm a preacher. I know. But I want to do the same stuff y'all do. Might be at home on Saturday nights trying to get myself together for y'all. Be thinking, man, I wish I could be up in the. And you may not like to hear that, but so what? At least I'm being honest. But you're a preacher. You're a man of God. I know, but I'm a man first. I wonder what he likes to do. The same stuff you like to do is what I likes to do. And you need to quit putting people on pedestals and thinking they all that in a bag of chips because ain't none of us worth nothing because we all got the same desires. Shake it off. This person, desire is there. But the superego has such a large presence within him until it keeps the reality of my actions in line. This person is a person that when everybody going out, yeah, man, we going out, we going we gonna to get high, we going to get drunk, we going to go to the club, have a good time, chase some girls. This the one that says, you know what? No, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, right. That's it. He don't like women? No, it ain't nothing with women. <laughs> he don't like men? No, it ain't nothing to do with men. They don't like having a good time. It ain't nothing about a good time. But that super ego, that which supersedes yeah. this world, I wish I had a witness, yeah. keeps my desires. See, church folk look like this. You preach to them every single Sunday. Tell them you ain't, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't go there. But they're always the same because they allow themselves to be controlled by satisfying self. Now, I'm okay if a lot of y'all are like this. That's fine. Because I was once like that. But when you hear the word of God Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you should start to look like this. The things I used to do, I don't do them no more. Why? Because you went from that to this. I don't believe that. He up there just like we in school. I could have got this from school. He gave a little scripture and then, and then he just giving his opinion. I don't care nothing about that. Okay, that's fine. But that's just the first half of the sermon. Now to shut you up, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take every chart that I just told you what it is and put the scripture to it. Look, somebody say, are you ready? Here we go. Now we're going to go back from square one. We're going to start with the normal person. Remember? Remember the equal displacement of it, ego, and. All right. That's the first one we looked at. It, remember, the drive, internal drive, the desire to, to, to want to be happy. Turn your Bibles to Romans 7. Just flip a couple of scriptures. Verse 
This is Paul. Now, I'm, what I'm showing you, so we can be clear, is I'm showing you theologically and scripturally how a normal person looks. Okay, that's what I'm trying to show you. And watch what Paul says. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is always present. What he's saying is, I want to do the right thing. I want to be committed to my wife, to my husband. I want to have an honest job and pay my taxes. But every time I try to do that, evil is always there. You see, Paul talks about dualism. He said, now, now watch, watch what he says before we get to that part. It says, Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I, I, I want to have a better relationship with God. I want to be in the presence of God. I want to always do the right thing. That's what he's saying. But in verse 23 it says, but I see another law in my what? Members. That's his body. That's his persona. That's who he is as a person. Now watch what this other law is. It says it's warring against the law of my mind. So he's saying my mind is telling me one thing. See, I know I've been taught. I've been preached to. I know what the word says. I know that when folk cuss me out that I should keep my silence. For it will be that if, if my enemy is hungry, give him bread. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For it will be as heaping hot coals on his head. I know that. I've been taught that. But you know what? When my enemies get on my nerves, I want to cuss them out. That's what Paul is saying. It's a war of what I should do over and against what I want to do. The should is this. But the desire is that. You want to cuss them out. That's it. Because when you cuss somebody out, you feel good. <laughs> Brother, my preaching, you hear me right there. That's it. I know you were with me. She go after your man. You want the satisfaction of getting the back. I see you, sister. You want to cut that car. Bust the windows at your car. See, that's that it. Go to, go to the Waffle House or wherever you go, and then that one sister got that attitude. You ever been to the airport and folk got them bad attitude? Come on. Check on our seven. Check. You know, like you, like she doing you a favor. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You go down to the courthouse and they be like, next. Well, excuse me, man. You can't come up here asking me them questions. You be like, what? What the? See, that's that it. That's that desire to want to get back at them. Who you think you talking to? That's that. That's that internal drive talking. mind is telling me this but my members my body is warring yes okay I get that but I don't totally understand okay if you understand this person who makes it plain is a theologian and he is a theologian by the name of Ara Kelly <laughs> know what he said my mind's telling me no but my body my body 
He's telling me yeah. You get it now? to make you think that you're a bad person. No, you're not. But it's about reestablishing proper balance. The desire will always be there. But when you mature and you grow in Christ, it keeps that ego in check. All right, you ready to see you? Ready? Here you come, ready? Bam. There you go. <laughs> Judges chapter 16. Come on, flip. Start at Romans and go left. <laughs> Judges chapter 16. Verse 15. Now let's get our reference. Now on this, remember the id is still there, the internal drive, the desire is still there. But the ego is big. So whoever this person is, is a person who has become accustomed to acting upon his urge. And this is a story about a man named Samson. Samson was a Nazarite. Say that with me, Nazarite. Nazarite. Just so you'll never forget, it was three special things that denoted a, a Nazarite. Number one, a Nazarite was totally committed to God. Totally committed to God. Number two, a Nazarite would not touch a dead body, nor would he consume alcohol. And number three, a Nazarite would never put a razor to his head. Now God anointed Samson. His anointing was his what? Strength. He was strong. The text says he killed thousands of Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Why did God anoint him? God anointed him because God used him to prepare his kingdom. The Philistines were the enemies of the Israelites. Remember David and Goliath? Goliath was a what? Philistine. And the Philistines were the main enemies of Israel, which kept them from entering the promised land. So God empowers this man named Samson with great strength and uses him to promote God's assignment. That's why you are anointed. You are anointed so you can promote God's plan. Why do you think the Democrats are mad because they lost the Senate seat in Massachusetts? Because no longer do the Democrats have a filibuster-proof Senate, which means if the president moves on something, there are not enough votes to promote his agenda. You are like the senators on earth. And the anointing that God gives you is your vote. And when you use your vote, it helps to promote God's plan. Now the problem with this man is because when you are anointed, you become attractive. I don't know why. That's a different sermon. But it's something about a person to where you can see God is with them. That naturally draws not only the saved, but the unsaved. There's something about the anointing that's attractive. 
So here this man was, big, strong, cock diesel, <laughs> Samson. Had a long, pretty gear that looked like he had a kid in his head. Y'all remember them Duke hair kits? Remember back in the day, brothers like that? He had a fresh kit. I wish I had a witness. Samson had a problem. He had, he had a womanizing problem. He loved women, but not just any kind of woman. He liked them fast women. Them harlots. You know what a harlot is, don't you? Samson messed around. He got caught up with this woman named Delilah. Now Delilah was sent by the enemies, the Philistines. Because the Philistines said he keep on messing us up. He keep on killing our men. We got to learn how, what makes him weak. So what happened was they said let's appeal to his desire. <laughs> He got a desire. He's got, he's got the desire to want to be with women. So they sent this little brunette, fine little sister from the west side. And she timed it. Y'all know how y'all are. Come on. I wish I had a witness. She timed it when he was coming in there. And she walked by him. He was like, oh, Lord, I'm about to text says He went in there. Oh, he laid and he played and see what happened was he commits sexual activity and what happened when he commits sexual activity she was no good but he fell in love with her now some people may went to this but I'm going to be real with y'all because y'all my people the sex was so good Until he got caught up in the sex fall. Pastor, what's the sex fall? I coined that phrase. I'm taking all credit. <laughs> the sex fall is when you have sex with a person that you connect with sexually. And it's so good until all your logic leaves. <laughs> I preach what folks scared to preach. And see, that's some of y'all's problem. You're just like a drug addict. You hate the pipe. You hate the drug. But you are addicted to how the drug makes you feel. Pastor, I know he ain't no good. I don't understand why I can't leave him. Oh, I know. Because you're with somebody that brings you pleasure. Samson got hooked up. It was good to him. So then she, here, here she comes, scandalous. Samson. Samson. Samson, why are you so strong? He's like, hi, you know, man, we know, you know, you know, you know how it is. You know, I just, I just, you know, so he playing all right, cause he a player, player. You know what I'm saying? He playing right. You know, he playing. Right, you know, baby. You know, you just, you just tie me up. You know, put some strain around my hand. Read it. This is the text when you get home. Just tie me up. You know, with a certain kind of strain. Will you tie me up? Boy, I'm gonna be weak. She tied him up. He broke loose. Got him some more. That's you. No, no, she ain't no good. So then she switched up. Sam said, why are you playing with me, Sam? Man, Sam, come on. Sam said, come on. See, I'm struggling with that because that ain't like natural for me. If I did it too good, you'd be looking kind of like, what's wrong with Pastor Joe? So I'm just, you know, I'm doing my best woman. That's all about all you get. It's a little awkward because you know, you hear me, sister. That's all I got. That's the best. Samson, Samson, why you, why you do that, Samson? 
Well, baby, you know, you just, you know how it is. You know, I play this guy like that. You know, I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? You know, just tie me up. She did it. Broke her loose. He played her, got him some more. <laughs> then she got mad. She did what all women do when they're trying to get something. She started crying. <laughs> why are you all lying to me? You lying? I don't know why you lying. I don't know why you lying to me. Why you tell me that? I don't know why you did that to me. Please, I don't know why you did it. <laughs> tell me, Samson, where does your strength lie? Samson got mad. He was emotionally connected with the reader when you get home. And we saw him say, he said, baby, I tell you, if you cut my head, my hair off my head, I'll be as weak as any natural man, he laid his head in her lap. Be careful what lap you lay your head in. He woke up the next morning, looked like me. Morning was gone. You're anointed, but your ego is too big. And the amazing thing about egotistical people is Freud said that babies are id driven. That's all they care about, satisfying them. But have you ever noticed how some folk who are egotistical act like children? Show you how you should look. Ready? Bam. Turn. Luke chapter 23, verse 33 through 34. Flip right. You start seeing some red, you're close. This is about who? Jesus. Go a little over today, but I'm going to be sure I get it all in. And this is Christ. Here Jesus is about to die. He's been beaten. He's been whipped. He's bleeding. Blood is coming from his back. A crown of thorns has been over his head. Blood trickling and burning his eyes. He's got this rugged cross splinters digging into his back. And the same folk that he healed, that he fed, on the side, saying, crucify him. Kill him. Now, if it were me, I would have responded like this. Who you think you talking to? It was me who died, who, who helped y'all when you were down. Y'all know how human folk are. Whenever somebody do you wrong, you, the first thing you feel the need to do is tell them what you've done for them, you know? That's that, that's that id, that's that ego talking. But what did Jesus do? He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not. Pastor, I have an objection. It's it up there with Jesus. Those are basic drives. Yep. I know. Wait a minute, Pastor. You said that the id is the basic desire to want to want to 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 uh, want to be pleased, want to be happy. Yeah, I know. So, Pastor, you saying that Jesus wanted to? Mm-hmm. Well, Pastor, you you wait wait a minute. You you mean that Christ really was kind of like? Thinking about, yep. Some of y'all struggling with that right now. You getting mad. You squirming in your seat like, I don't know how that feels. But just let me explain it. The reason why Christ is our God, the reason why Jesus is so special is because not only was he God, 
But Christ was a man. He had the same desires that you got. The reason why you don't see it is because when the Bible was constructed, one of the major plans of putting a text in the Bible is to make Christ look morally consistent. But the same desires that are in you were in Jesus. What's the difference? He didn't act. On his desires. Why do you think Satan tried to tempt him? If he didn't have an end, if he wasn't like you, why would Satan try to lure him by saying, if you bow to me, I'll give you all of this. But man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds. So when you grow in Christ, this gets bigger and me gets smaller. See, see, when I grow in Christ, the God in me is bigger. But the me that I used to be is smaller. What do you think he was saying? Greater is he. What do you think that means? <laughs> Greater is he, the God that's in me than the me without God. What makes me great when I know God? It's not because you're going to get rich. It's not because your finances may change. But what happens is when my thinking is different, you become happier. How are you happier? Because this person who has a large super ego is going to be happier because this person is going to say, I ain't dating nobody unless God sends them and they meet my requirements. Because I can do bad all by myself. I may be by myself, but at least you ain't unhappy. See, this is the person that when you're, when you're given the opportunity to do something illegal, you turn it down. And you just may be broke, but at least when you go to sleep at night, you ain't worried about the feds showing up. You're not worried about the harm that you do for somebody else. Greater is he that is in me. So as I close, back to our principal text, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye what? So when you live in the world and you are impacted by what the world tells you you ought to be that's how you look see what happens to our children and in the series we'll get into that but what happens to our kids is marketers try to appeal to their ego Look at all the videos. The one who got all the money got all the what? Women. All the what? Cars. All the, all the fame. So that kid looks at that image and his mind becomes programmed. Oh, I want that. Can I get it going to college? Not fast enough. Can I get it moving boxes? No. How do I get it? You can sell dope. You can hustle. You can rob. You can steal. But Paul is saying, you can't be of that. 
But you got to be different. But the only way you're going to be different is if a transformation, the basis of transformation is change. What must change? How you are, how you think. A transition from ego to super ego. Pastor, I'm broke. I ain't got all I got, but I work hard every day. God bless you. God, we thank you for your word, for who you are, for what you've done. Lord, forgive us for, for all of our sins. Elevate us from this condition. Change our mind, our thinking, that we may better know you. Lord, if it be a person, a man, woman, boy, or girl who has never accepted you as their Lord and Savior, let them give their lives to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, do we pray. And they all said amen.